Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. I was doing some testing on foiling, gold foiling, some different types of materials and different types of ways to foil. And I thought perhaps you would like to see some of the results in case you ever gold foil anything. And I tried several different ways to get the foil onto the project in question. And my favorite way is going to be the laminator method. And that is printing with a laser printer and then using a gold reactive foil that you lay on top and then run through the printer. That's going to be my favorite way just because you can get pretty intricate designs. The printer and the laminator basically does all the work. So as long as you do your printing with the best settings, you're gonna get a pretty decent result. Here was a DIY illuminated page that I made and I did get one little wrinkle right there in the foil, but other than that, it's pretty pristine and I got a good foil adhesion on that one. This was using the We Are Memory Keepers freestyle pen that you can plug in and then you put foil over the top and then I put a piece of wax paper or very thin tissue paper over the top. And you can trace your design, would be a good idea because you can't see through the foil. So I, you trace your design and then you go over it with the foil pen. And that one turned out pretty well. Kind of labor intensive though, because you have to trace your design onto the tissue paper, or whatever you're gonna lay on top over the foil. And then you have to trace again and of course you can lift it up and look and make sure you're getting everything. This takes a minute, so you know. This was using Vaseline, just regular petroleum jelly on a paintbrush. And I painted over just the initial that I had printed with this graphic. And then I sprinkled the embossing powder over the top and embossed the and just the initial on there. And that worked pretty well too. The only thing is, is that, you know how embossing is, the powder can get everywhere, so you have to be careful because once you put the heat gun on there, it's done. So a little bit more labor intensive as well, but pretty simple. And I didn't have a stamp that I wanted to use with like an embossing ink pad that you're supposed to use. So that's why I just used the paintbrush and painted over just where the initial needed to go, just what I wanted to emboss. Then this one, this too, I painted over an initial that was printed on this graphic, but I painted over that initial with some metal leaf adhesive and this is by Beacon. I think I got this at a local craft store, but you can get it on Amazon or other online art places, all kinds of places. There are a few things about this though to be aware of. You do get a pretty good result. I just use the gold flake, the imitation gold flake over the top. You just have to be aware that there are a few things that could totally mess you up. And one of those things is, is if you paint too much on, the metal leaf adhesive never dries all the way. It leaves a tacky finish and that's what this sticks to. So if you leave too much, after you put your foil down and you use a paintbrush or something to wipe away the excess, that extra adhesive under there is just going to stay gummy and it's going to come through because there's too much there for the foil to soak up or whatever. So be aware of that. Another thing is, is it's kind of hard to see where you're painting it on. So you may leave some gaps that you didn't want to leave or you may paint outside the area that you want to paint outside of. So there are just some different things about it that can be tricky, but you do get a fairly good result because this gold leaf, this imitation gold leaf flake is pretty shiny 
And so if you do a decent job of painting it on there, you can get a pretty decent result. Again, it's labor intensive, but not everybody has a laser printer and a laminator just available, right? I did try also just painting with some metallic paint. And perhaps if I had had some shinier paint, this is the Folk Art Pure Gold that I used on the book press when I painted that. And it's, it's gold, but it's not like super duper duper wicked gold. And I just thought that it didn't leave enough of a finish. It, it kind of blended in with everything else. Now, had I painted it on black cardstock or something like that, it probably would show up a lot better. But how I used it, it didn't, it didn't show up that great and it wasn't very shiny. So there's that. So your mileage may vary. Just be aware that if you're foiling anything or you know adding foil accents, that if you're gonna use a laminator and the laser printer technique, that that has to use the gold reactive foil. And this is totally different than the one that you use with the heat activated foil. And this is totally different. This is what you can use with the We Are Memory Keepers, the freestyle pen, and you can use this with like a stamping machine, one of the heated stamping machines. And then that is totally different from this. So there are three different kinds of foil and they are not like each other. They are not interchangeable. You can't use either one of these to do the toner laminator method. You can't use either one of these if you wanna use the heat stamping thing. And if you wanna get the adhesive, it's only gonna work on this. It's not gonna do a great job on these two. So there's three different types of foil. At least that's what I have right here. There's other kinds, but they don't work like each other. So just be aware of that. I would hate for somebody to buy some foil, but buy the wrong type for the technique that you want to do. The cheapest way to buy foil, at least for any of the techniques in general, is gonna be either the flakes because you buy one of these and there is no way on God's green earth I will ever run out of this. You just don't use that much. And it's like bunnies. Every time you go back in there, it's like the jar is full again. I don't know how it works. It's magic, but you never run out ever, 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 ever. For the heat activated foil, probably the cheapest way is not gonna be to buy any We Are Memory Keepers rolls. It's going to be to buy the kind that goes in a stamping machine. It comes in rolls and you can get it in different widths and it's really cheap. And there are different places on Etsy you can buy that or Amazon or eBay, all kinds of places. So that's going to be fairly cheap as well. And so is the embossing powder because this stuff lasts a good long time as well. And like I said, I just used petroleum jelly. I didn't even use the stuff you're supposed to use. I'm assuming you might be able to get away with using glycerin, just paint glycerin on there too, but I didn't try it. So don't quote me on that. Some of the things I tried to foil as far as stuff after I got all these done and I tried to figure out which technique I wanted to do. Then I was doing some with the pen and this is a card, it's an eco print card, and it's one of the digis in my store where it comes with cards and envelopes, but I thought it was kind of cool to add a little bit of gold accents. And all I did was take a piece of wax paper and I laid it over the top, and I kind of just drew where I wanted it according to where the flowers were, and then I just slipped the foil and then drew over the top, that's all I did. And that was actually pretty quick. It's not real super precise or anything, but I didn't really need it to be. I just wanted some hints, some accents around some of the flowers and the stems, just to kind of accent a few. I think it turned out kind of cool though. I think there could be lots of different ways that that could be used. Another way that I used the pen and traced over the 
wax paper was some of the glassine wings. Remember we made the glassine? And in my store, there are graphics where you can print out wings. And I like them on this DIY glassine because they're more transparent and they look more like wings than just printing them on regular paper. And then all I did was I traced over the veins with the gold and I think it turned out really pretty. So I think those could be cool even on a greeting card. I took a dowel rod and I curled it kind of like you would ribbon. And I think if you attach that, how cute that would be on a gift or a little card on top or something. Anyway, I just thought it was cute. You could make wall art with a bunch of these on the wall. You know, you have pretty flying golden sprinkled wings up the wall or something. I don't know. I just, I think there's a lot of neat things you could do with them. And I wanted to show you that because I thought you would, I thought you'd appreciate that as well. And then I thought, you know, there are some things that I have that I'm not really super jazzed about. Maybe they could have a little bit of a change and I would like them. This is one example. I'll try not to show you the good part. I did this hand marbled paper a few years ago and the print didn't come out that great. There's a line here where the paint didn't adhere and you know, all that stuff. So what I did was I created a graphic in Photoshop in just black and white. And I put this through the laser printer and printed this ripple over the top. I did part of it because I, I wanted to be able to see before and after. Kind of wish I did the whole thing now because I really like, I really like it. But then I ran it through the laminator with a sheet of the gold reactive foil that goes for the laminator. And that's how it turned out. And I am digging it. Like really, really digging it now. So I think this would be really cool for greeting cards or end sheets on books, book covers. You oh, I know, just, it's cool though, right? And then, I know some of you are thinking, yeah, but you used a piece of foil this big. I know, oh my God. What are you gonna do with the negative? Cause you peel it off and it's got the negative, right? So then I took a piece of black, kind of handmade, but not handmade paper. And I put the negative on this after I printed black, just a black square or well, rectangle. Plop that on there put that through the laminator and it's probably not showing up on camera that great, but I think you could cut these up and make little um, like gift tags out of them or bookmarks. I mean, there's all kinds of different things you could do. So it's not like I wasted the foil. I'm just using it on something else. I just had to print black toner on something and just FYI, it will stick to all colors, not just black. I just wanted to see it on the black. You could print hot pink toner on something and lay this down and whatever foil was left on that off cut. What would you call it? Because after I printed this, this was left over. So whatever foil is left over on that sheet, that it'll pick up toner on whatever you put it on. So you can print just a square or a rectangle of something, pop that on there and then it will adhere to anyway. And then I took some of my grungy forest dyed paper that I made and I put this falling leafy branch pattern all over the top of it. Again, with the gold reactive foil and then sent it through the laminator. Toner is cheap, kind of, because <laughs> it lasts a long time. So it's not like it costs a lot. The foil costs more than the toner. So, and I even buy like third party toner. And I know you're not supposed to do that because it like voids your warranty or whatever, but the cartridges that came with my printer lasted for three years and it's not under warranty anymore anyway. So I'm like, what do I have to lose? I am not kidding you. You cannot make this up. It was gonna cost hundreds of dollars to replace those. So I found a company that I used their ink for my inkjet printer 
So I tried out their toner and it works just fine. And it was 50 bucks for all the colors. So yay, right? Yay for spending 10% of what I should have spent. So anyway, it's really cheap if you go that route. But I think that looks really pretty on this grungy olivey green. I think it's gorgeous. This is the sheet, the off, the off cuts. But I printed another thing through it. And what that was, I went back into Photoshop and on the leaf pattern, I put stars in betwixt the leaves so that I could print the stars with the toner, then lay this over the top and send it through. The stars were in the gold places in between the other graphics. So then I got a little starry page. Isn't that pretty? So I thought that turned out really cute. And then I have this piece that I can print something on something, a, a solid rectangle of something and run this through. And then I'll have this gold foil, the stars and the leaves, I'll have that. So I won't waste it. I'll just print it like this one. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. I'm thinking even on printed marble paper, print the marble paper first, just print it on an inkjet don't print it on a laser or you'll put your foil down there and it'll just stick to everything. I would print the whatever image first. Like when I printed these, I printed the image on the background with an inkjet printer. Then you run it back through whatever image or graphic you want the foil to stick to. That gets printed over the top with the laser printer. And then you put the foil on top and run it through the laminator. And then it sticks to just that toner part. So I think that turned out pretty darn cool. I had a hard time finding images that I liked that I could print over the top of something else to do this technique with. So I had to create my own. I couldn't find any to purchase that I liked. So I created the stars and I created the branches and I created the swirl. So I might put those up on the Etsy store just in case somebody else wants to try this technique. I'm thinking that not just marble paper that I'm not jazzed about, but maybe scrapbook paper, designer cardstock or something that I'm just like, Ugh, I don't really love that, but the colors are great, but I don't really love whatever the theme is or something. I think if you printed with a laser printer some really cool design over the top and foiled that, think of all the different things you could do. I don't know. This was one that I did and it's like a DIY illuminated page. Back in the Renaissance and a little bit before that, they were painting gold leaf on top of book pages like in Bibles and other important works. It was called illuminating when they did that. So what I did was I printed with my inkjet printer the color graphic here and the poem. And then I created an overlay in just black and white with the H for Helen and the little leaves. And I sent this back through the printer, but through the laser printer and I printed black. And then I put the foil on top. But I put little pieces because this one wasn't all over so I could just kind of piece little pieces. And then I sent it through the laminator and got kind of a DIY illuminated page look. I think it turned out pretty cool though. It's different. Some tips about if you're gonna do this technique, if you have a laser printer, is make sure that you use the highest photo setting. Even if you're only printing black, you know, black and white image, it doesn't matter. You need a lot of toner because if you don't use a lot of toner, you get this. And you might be able to see how it's patchy and how some of the black is coming through. That's because I didn't use the highest setting. This was just the standard setting. This one is a little bit better. It's still patchy and that's my fault. I forgot to change the paper to glossy photo paper. You want it to lay down a bunch of toner. So you don't want to just put plain paper as your media that you're printing on or thick paper or envelopes or something. You want it to think that it's printing on glossy photo paper because you need a lot of toner to print on that type of 
paper stock. That's what I forgot to do. I forgot to change it to that. When I did this one, this super, super shiny one, I did, I put in there that I was printing on glossy photo paper. And then also my printer has an option in the printer options advanced area where you can choose, it's called something like improve toner, something about how the toner sticks to the paper stock. Anyway, I turned that on <laughs> to make sure that it was, I think it goes through hotter. When it heats up that toner hotter, it really sticks it down to the paper and it's less likely to smudge or something. So if you're gonna be laying down a lot of toner on something that's not glossy photo paper, but you're telling it it's glossy photo paper, if you have that option, turn it on because it really will help that adherence on the paper. And you gotta be real careful because you are putting a lot of paper, uh, a lot of toner on your paper that's meant for a different type of paper. Just be real careful. Don't smudge and muck around with it a lot. After it comes out of the printer, just lay it aside until you're ready. If you're gonna be using like a little envelope, like you're supposed to use an envelope, stick it between something, you know, I just use tissue paper or something. Just lay it in there gingerly, carefully, lay your foil, close it up, put it in, but don't move it around too much because you don't want to smudge the toner that you've just printed on there. Because it laid down a lot, there might be extra, so you don't want to smudge that around. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Sometimes it feels like when I'm explaining something, it's like I'm trying to get everything in there and then I'm like, is that too much? Am I totally talking in circles and now everybody's going, oh, I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> it's always my fear. I, I just fear that I'm overcomplicating things. And I do, I do overcomplicate all kinds of things. It would not be a surprise if that's what I do. <laughs> But anyway, I thought maybe you guys would appreciate seeing some of the tests that I did. In case you are foiling anything or you're thinking about investing in a laminator or something, the laminators aren't expensive. You can get a laminator for like 20 bucks. Laser printers aren't even expensive anymore. They used to be, but they're not and you don't need a color laser printer to do this. It just needs to be a monotone. And then replacing the toner is not that bad if you get a good, reputable, third-party, generic brand to get. It's not that bad anymore. The foil's gonna be more expensive, although even that's not horrible. Your mileage may vary. I don't know where you live or what you have available to you in your area. That's why it's good that there are a lot of options, I think. You can decide what's good for you, what you can afford, or what is feasible as far as getting replacement materials and supplies and that kind of thing. Or even if you want to do it. I think it's just kind of a cool thing. It's hard to get a good gold foil look if you're just printing something because you can print something that looks like it has gold foil on it, but it'll never be reflective like it is when you actually gold foil something or silver foil it or copper foil it or whatever foil you're using. There's no comparison with actually doing the work on top of your project. All right, well, that is it for this subject for the day. Just thought I would pass the info along in case you're interested. And I have um, a project and a freebie coming up in the next video, but I didn't wanna combine everything in and make it 45 minutes long. So we'll just put that in another video. That'll be easier for me and you, I think. So with that said, I will be seeing you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.